This is the Devotion Rewind, where we take a look back through the archive at some of Pastor Robert's most loved sermons. Join us as we get blessed once again through this powerful message. So I'll be talking about love conquering all, but really about big love and small love. Because, you know, God has love for us that is so big that it's immeasurable and it's inexhaustible. It's eternal sufficient. His love is eternally sufficient, eternally abundantly overflowing. And I love that scripture where it says in Jeremiah 31 verse 3, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I've drawn you to myself in loving kindness and I will rebuild you and remake you. And you know, God is such a faithful lover and that is what also gives us such confidence. And I want to encourage you today, let the Holy Spirit bless you. And I pray as we open this word, Father, I pray your grace over every person listening today, that your love is poured out into their hearts afresh and anew by your Holy Spirit and that we may know we are in your love and that your love is more than enough in Jesus' name. I'll take you to Matthew chapter 22. And the scripture says there in Matthew 22, verse 36. Let's start at verse 35. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, and he's talking to Jesus, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law, and the prophets. And the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, was quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 6 when he was saying this. And I just want to read you this because I think it's so important that we realize that within what context the Lord says we are to love the Lord our God and to love our neighbor, which is similar to the first commandments. And this is what it says here in Deuteronomy 6, starting at verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. In other words, It needs to live in your heart to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, in other words. And these words shall be in your heart, right? You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you go to sleep, in other words, and when you rise up, And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as a frontlet between your eyes. And you you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. In other words, the Lord Jesus says, it needs God, our love for God needs to live in our home. In our home is where we need to know this love of God. It needs to be obvious even as you walk up to your house and you come to your house. And when somebody sees you and me, it needs to be on our hands. It needs to be on our face, really, as a frontlet between your eyes. It needs to be on our face. It needs to be on our hands. The hands is you shake your hands. You give a shoulder pad. You provide food. You provide comfort. You provide appreciation and thanks and hello and goodbye. And it needs to be on your hands. It needs to be on your face shining. What? 
your love for God. And that love needs to be expressed to one another. A love for God needs to be expressed to one another. You should talk about it in your house. You should talk about your love for God. And you should talk about it when you go to sleep and when you get back up and when you walk down the road. Talk about the love of God. And when I talk about this today, I was reminded by this amazing story how Jesus was invited into a home where love was very small, where there was very little love. There was love for God, but it was not very noticeable. It was not very obvious. It was not welcoming. It was there, but it was invisible. And what I'm trying to show you from the scripture here is that God says that his love needs to be visible in our homes, visible in our relationships, visible in how we go to sleep and how we wake back up and how we walk down the road. It needs to be visible. And Jesus came to this house in Luke, the Gospel of Luke chapter 7, please. Luke chapter 7. And this was the house of a man called Simon. And he was a Pharisee. So he was a representative of the law. That was his lifestyle to do what the law said. And of course, when Jesus was asked more than once what was the great commandment of the law, it was to love God. And people, listen now, that were Pharisees like Simon, they knew what was the great commandment. Because, for example, in Luke chapter 10, a man who was also a Pharisee, who was a ruler, came to Jesus, running up to him and said, what must I do that I may receive eternal life? And Jesus said to him, well, what does the law tell you to do? He said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And Jesus said, well, do this and you shall live. And then the scripture says, but the, but the man, oh, let's read it. Let's go there. Luke chapter 10 for just a second. Let me just go ahead and love the Lord your God. Verse 27, with all your heart, soul, and all your strength, and all your mind, and your, and your neighbors, yourself. That was the man's answer. That, and Jesus said to him, well, you've answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he, listen now, wanting to justify himself. In other words, when Jesus said, you already know what to do. You know what to do. So just do what you know to do. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. Do it. You see, it's not enough to know it. It's important to do it. And this man, he knew it, but he seemingly wasn't doing it because then when Jesus looked at him and said, wow, that's a good answer. Do this and you have life. But the tenant says, he wanting to justify himself said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus told him this story of this man who was going from Jerusalem down to Jericho and was overtaken by robbers and was beaten and robbed of his clothing and was laying there on the side of the road bleeding. And a priest was coming by and looked at him, but passed by on the other side of the road and did not stop. This is Jesus telling this story. And the Levite came by and saw him and passed by on the other side of the road and did not stop. But a Samaritan came and when he saw him, came off of his mule and tended to his wounds and put oil on them and put him on his mule and carried him to the inn and gave sufficient finances for his care and said, when I return, if there was any more expense, I will take care of it. And Jesus looked at this lawyer. He said, who do you say was neighborly? And he said, the one who showed kindness to the man. And Jesus looked at him and he said, come on. You know it. You know what to do. Begin to do it. And you know, this is something familiar to all of us, including myself, that sometimes we know what to do, but we just don't do it. We just don't do it. 
And I'm so grateful for these scriptures in Philippians 2 verse 13, where it says God gives the willingness and the ability to please Him, that He makes us able. And sometimes, folks, we need to really pray and say, Father, you've put your love in my heart. Help me to show it. Let it be visible to those in the home. Father, you filled my heart with so much gratitude for your mercy. You filled my heart with so much gratitude for your love and your goodness to me. I'm so thankful for who you've made me in Christ. You've forgiven all my sin. You've caused me to know your righteousness in my heart. Help me to show it to others, Lord. Help me to show it, Father. Or as Jesus would simply say, let your light so shine that men may see your good works. See your good works and that they may glorify your Father by what they see the Heavenly Father has given you. You see, when we're talking about love conquering all, we're talking about people being able to see the love of God in our lives. So let me take you back now to chapter 7 of the Gospel of Luke. And starting at verse 35, chapter 7, where Jesus is asked by a Pharisee uh, to come and eat at his house. Verse 36, one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. This is a perfume that was said to be worth a year's wages. <laughs> when, when this happened in Jesus' life just before, when Mary anointed Jesus' head with the similar oil just before he went to the cross, it is what triggered such an offense in Judas to want to go ahead and start down the dark road of betrayal because he so was indignant and envious and jealous that Jesus was so blessed. Oh, how important it is that we guard our hearts. Love is not envious, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 says. Oh, let's always be happy when other people are blessed and never look down on that. But look what happened here. She had this oil with her. And she stood, verse 38, at his feet behind him, weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with her hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with this fragrant oil. Now, when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself. In other words, he was thinking inside of him saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Do you see what was happening in Simon's heart? You see how he was being offended inside of him? Do you see how his heart was having little love because he was so judgmental, so irritated, so offended? Do you know something? Sometimes folks, we can be unaware of it, that our love has grown little and that we quickly get irritated, that we're quickly judgmental. Oh, you should do this. Or why aren't you doing that? And you never do this, you know. And we become judgmental. And that is little love. We are not aware of it, that our love is hardly visible or not visible at all. We get angry over nothing. We get all strung up and all anxious over nothing. And that shows that our love has become little, but we're not aware of it. Thank you for listening to today's installment of Devotion Rewind. If you were blessed by today's message, please feel free to contact us and visit our website at lifechurchuk.org.